Well, hey guys, thanks for stopping by the channel. It's another Screwy Tuesday. And you see, uh, I guess I got my co-star with me today. Um, so the other day I come home from work and there's a package. I'm going like, oh cool, somebody sent me something. So I take a look, open it up, and it's from my friend Keith Rucker. And he says, hi Chuck, decided this that some viewer appreciation mail was in order. But I thought it was needed to go to the real star of the channel. Hope Howie enjoys. So the son of a gun is getting viewer appreciation mail. Come on, sit on your stool there, you're like a little seal. You're not liking this. So, look what Howie got. Howie got some treats. Hmm, let's see. Think you can sit on that stool now? Let's see what's in there. Watch your nose, buddy. These are from, uh, these are peanut butter. All right, relax there, buddy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the star went down. All right. So anyway, try to get this little package open. Keith, thank you very much. It was really nice of you to send the uh, little treats to Howie, my buddy here. There you go, bud. You like those? Oh yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Uh, some healthy dogma peanut butter recipe barkers. Thanks, Keith. Keith also uh, flipped me uh, some of his stickers. Uh, got those also, so those will be uh, mounted in there on the toolbox. Uh, so what's happening around here? Uh, not much work in the shop. Um, my uh, as you know, I have a special needs son. Uh, he threw it all that. Hey, cut it out. What are you doing? A lot of you guys know it. And uh, our caregivers uh, are all from Ethiopia. Uh, three different young ladies. And uh, one of them went home for a wedding. So they all took off for about a six week vacation back home. So uh, my wife and I are doing all the work on our own, helping with our son, and uh, it's cutting on shop time. But uh, that's life. Uh, life will return to somewhat normal again. And uh, so as a filler, since I didn't get to do much work around here, uh, I asked my buddy Craig if we could come back over and shoot some more video on his CNC conversion of his mill. And uh, so I went over uh, Saturday morning and uh, we went through a little more discussion on the setup on it, and then uh, you'll see he runs a uh, basically a program where he had made a part. Uh, this this uh, run through of the uh, making of the part will just be done in air, but it just shows the uh, sequencing of the machine. So uh, thank you, Craig, for letting me come over and do a little more video, and uh, I hope everybody enjoys it. And other than that, uh, let's move on with the uh, the video. Thanks guys for stopping by. Well, I came back over to uh, my friend Craig's shop here and uh, last week we uh, had a quick review of his mill that he converted to a CNC and uh, he's allowing me to come back over and do a little more filming and he's going to uh, actually run it uh, through a mock program and we can talk about uh, the different items he has here. Um, so I'm going to go handheld here for a second and, and walk you guys around. Uh, sorry I don't got one of those high dollar gimbals like uh, Stan just got the other day. That was nice, wasn't it? Yeah, so my gimbal's <laughs> going to be a little a little shaky. Um, so we got uh, stepper motor setups on the uh, X and the Y. And right now the covers are off. And it, at one time, uh, Craig was running the handles on these, but found, and we'll talk about that, but found that the controller was much easier to, uh, to use and the handles were really kind of useless for it and come around the other side here yeah and here's the oh yeah there's the stepper motor there's the stepper motor uh, and that's got a two to one two to one belt drive timing belt drive so 
So and the two to one drive is on the on the X and the Y. Right. Right. And then we'll come around to the other side of the mill. And there's the stepper motor for the knee. There, I had to cut a uh, a little window in the side of the knee casting between two of the uh, two of the ribs, and then there's a timing belt drive that drives right into a pulley on the uh, uh, knee lead screw. And all of all the lead screws have been changed on this mill to ball screws, so it, it runs fairly efficiently now. I originally had them on the Acme screws, but uh, that didn't work out too well. Uh, it, especially since the Acme screws were already wore out. And you you built a we'll go around the other side there. So and you built a new column. Yeah, for, to, to install to install the uh, ball screw on the uh, mill the the uh, ball nut was bigger than the Acme nut for the, uh, the original stanchion, so I had to make make a new stanchion for it. Kind of some pipe and a flange. And, and then if you notice behind it, there's a shock of two shock absorbers there. Yeah, they're, uh, they're um, gas springs like you'd have on a chair or something to, to uh, take some weight off the knee. They're 200 pounds a piece. So I've got about 400 pounds of uh, gas strut on it. And did we mention that the Knee's run at three to one. Knee is running so three, three to, to one, one. Yeah, yeah, to give it more more torque on the motor, uh, more torque from the motor. And then up on the head here, we've got a quill drive. It's a little little smaller stepper. Uh, it's got a bearing assembly and uh, another ball screw, and then a yoke that attaches right into the uh, right into the the quill through the uh, attachment where the uh, the trip uh, dog would would actually attach in for the, uh, quilt, for the automatic uh, downfeed, I guess is what you call it. On the quill, yeah, yeah, on the quill. And then over here, your your uh, limit switch. We were talking about. Oh that yeah, the uh, inductive lim inductive limit switches, and then there's a sense plate here. You, by the length of the plate, you can set wherever you want your limit switch to be. And then the motors run with a VFD. So you can control the speed of the speed of the motor uh, from the computer. Okay. And then we'll come over to the software. Let me, let me, let me back on your. Yeah. Let me. Uh, okay. Put you back in the stand here. So talk about the software. Yeah. The, s the software that I'm running on the on the mill here is uh, Mach 3. It's been around for quite a few years now. Um, I'm sure they have lots and lots of installations now. It's not it's not open source and free, but it's not too expensive, and um, it this installation is running with the standard parallel port uh, on the computer motherboard, which drives the uh, Gecko stepper motor drivers uh, through the two bits in the parallel port. You have a step and direction. So for every step, it goes one cog in the stepper motor, and then the direction line says you were going counterclockwise or clockwise. And uh, there's lots of different screens you can you can download and customize it. This is just the generic. Uh, I've made no modifications to the screen or anything. It's it's just the way it comes. Uh, the mock folks are working on uh, version four now. Uh, I think it's somewhat out in beta now. I haven't I haven't looked into that yet. I'm waiting for him to get all the bugs out of it. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have all the bugs out of three either. So. And then we got your uh, pendant. I guess oh you... yeah, it's got a pendant and a hand controller. So uh, this one's kind of a ratty one that's been dropped and run over by the table a couple of times, uh, but it allows you to control the. Uh, Control the X, Y, and the Z, and I, I have an A for the knee, so I can run the knee up and down. Um, lots of other things you can program it to do. I only have a, a couple of functions uh, set up in here, so I just use it for positioning. Cool. So let's, let's run that little demo program. Okay. I'm going to run a little program that um, I have a, a cover on one of my connectors here that I that I milled out, and so. We're just going to cut air with this uh, program that built that cover. Rewind the program here. 
zero everything out. Start to spill, it's going to do a couple of drills. So it's tech drilling now, right? Now it's asking for a tool tank, another drill. Oh, I guess it must have been for a mill because it's now pocketing. It looks like it's taking about an eighth of an inch to cut. Yeah, I probably should have set a piece of plastic in there. We could have lost it so chips. Yeah, make a mess. <laughs> So now it's cut in the pocket. Yep. Right? Almost done. Did a nice job. Not any mess at all. Yeah, I like those jobs. <laughs> Nothing to clean up. <laughs> all right, we'll be right back. Go ahead. Okay, from the hand controller, uh, you can position the... Uh, mill table anywhere you want. Uh, you have the ability to select any of the axes. I have four axes on. I got the X, the Y, uh, the Z, which is the, the quill, and then the A, which is the uh, the knee. So if I hold the uh, little button here on the side down, I go into rapid so I can control where the um, X is. So I do the Y, I control the Y. And then the Z. And then if you want to do it, uh, position it very accurately, you don't press the button and then you do a thousandth at a time. Or if I set it in the software, I can do less than a thousandth. But normally I just leave it on a thousandth. So it doesn't matter how fast you spin that, it'll go only a thousandth. Right, thousandth per click. Now if you do it real slow, then you're a thousandth times. So you could actually cut like this, but it's not the preferred way to cut. And then the, then the knee will go up and down. Beats cranking the handle for sure. Going fairly good today, actually. So when you're using the edge finder to find the edge, and you just 
come over a thousand at a time until the edge finder clicks out and then you set your software to zero it. Uh, there's another way you can run it which is called continuous mode and as long as I rotate the um, hand wheel the table will slew at a specific rate depending on what you've set in the software run in either direction. So that, that allows you to cut just like you would if you had a, a servo drive on your table or something like that. And that works on all, all the axes as well. Never tried it on the A. There you go. Yeah. And you were saying you could override too with the, the button on the side? Uh, uh, not in the see? continuous mode. Okay. But just in the in the in the just uh, in the in the step mode. If right. I press the button, I go fast. If I and it's pretty much all you need. You know, that's fast enough to position your yeah. your table to get close, and then once you get close enough, then you let your finger off the button and you take it a thousand at a time, or if you set it right, you set it to a half thousand at a time. It's kind of an older mill, and you're not going to get too much better than a, a thousandth out of it. Maybe if you're lucky, you could get half a thousand, but you, you've got to be right on. <laughs> yeah. Well, great. Thank you, Craig. You're welcome. That's a good boy. Hey, stay. Stay. Come on. You're a pain in the ass. You're a pain in the ass.